In my review of the Africa Twins engine, I inserted some video clip that was shot some two years before my actual test ride. In a video clip, the engine was on display at a motorcycle show and it was encased in plexiglass. On that engine, some parts were cut away, so the internal components were exposed and uh, there I made some observations. What I saw at the exhaust pipes is uh, that some of the exhaust valve was exposed as well as the uh, springs. Uh, there was a tappet screw and I said you need a 10 millimeter wrench for that tappet screw and uh, the rocker arm was also partially exposed. So I also saw that this is a single overhead cam uh, that was uh, rotating up top so I said oh this is a single overhead cam design with uh, two rocker arms and that's it. Uh, and, and, and I assumed that the exhaust is the same as the intake side. I was wrong and thank you for pointing it out. Concerning valve adjustments you can see the springs in the middle of the picture and there is some uh, reaching out to the top of the springs and you can see some bolts on it. Probably 10 millimeter wrench will loosen those bolts. The valves don't adjust with shims. Not, these are not the cam lobes directly compressing the springs. The little screws mounted at the end of the arms are compressing the springs. Sorry. On the surface area where the pressure is distributed for compressing those springs is really, really small. This kind of screw type adjustment is reasonable on a 125cc engine, but on an Africa Twin 1000, whatever, it's a big engine. Okay, uh, I don't know how practical it is. In a desert, I guess, it's practical if you have to check uh, your valve lash or uh, valve clearance uh, with a filler gauge and two 10 millimeter wrenches, but why would you need to do that in the middle of the desert? Uh, and so anyhow, I don't know how practical this is that they went instead of cams with big and wide cam lobes and pressing against shims they went with these Mickey Mouse size screws so that's that over here I have an image from uh, worldhonda.com so this is an actual Honda image that they they produced and this is not a single overhead cam although there is a single overhead cam that's rotating here but Honda calls it a unicam this is why on a purely single overhead cam design, this is a schematic, uh, blue for intake, red for exhaust, it doesn't really matter. You can see that these are side by side and one camshaft, those would be the cams, those bumps, those cams are driving the exhaust and the intake, uh, alternating them at specified intervals. Another design is the double overhead cam when you have two of these camshafts one is exclusively for the intake the other one exclusively for the exhaust and um, these are timed differently so it needs uh, two of those uh, sprockets and a longer chain. You have double the overhead rotating mass than in a single overhead design. So Honda has a single overhead cam but it has a secondary shaft there that goes through the rocker arms and those rocker arms are just just as you saw in that video actuate on a tappet screw the tappet screw has a 10 millimeter nut at the end of it and my observations weren't wrong they were incomplete so this is Honda system instead of two full overhead cams that are twice as heavy as a single overhead cam than the longer chain. They minimized the amount of mass that's rotating overhead or rotating at higher in the engine at the highest possible spot. So instead of raising the center of gravity, which isn't a good thing in uh, any motorcycle basically, so they went with this modified single overhead cam design where you have more more of the mass than in a single overhead cam design because you have a secondary shaft there with these uh, rocking uh, follower arms there but it's not a fully double overhead cam so as a result you have shims 
underneath those cams actuating on those intake valves and you have the tappet screw on the exhaust valve. This design has been around for long for off-road biking. As a result, you need two sets of tools and setup. You need a screwdriver and a 10 millimeter wrench. It's not a huge investment or something, but this is an imprecise adjustment with because the screwdriver, because as you tighten the nut, the screwdriver is gonna turn, as well as the um, tappet screws itself need to be manufactured really really well so that they don't deform in normal operation. Now the changing the screw is very cheap and very simple if they do deform but I'm just saying this is a little bit of added mechanical complexity at the price or at the gain of not having two heavy shafts rotating higher in the motorcycle. On the other side, on the intake sides here, you have just shims, just a flat disc. It looks like a hockey puck, just small, or looks like a coin, okay? So that's what's underneath these rotating cams. The reason why they didn't go with a single overhead cam or couldn't go because you see the direction of the crankshaft is like so therefore the direction of the camshaft is like so intake and exhaust side by side here and in the double overhead cam this is what Honda has the exhaust pipe is exiting this way here from the bike so you see these are not side by side these two are side by side, but the intake and exhaust are not side by side and not in the direction of the overhead camshaft. So, but they didn't want to do this, so they kind of invented an in-between solution, this Unicam system. All right, and they didn't invent it yesterday. Like I said, it's been around for years. So I apologize about my oversight and thank you for pointing it out. And over here in the same PDF manual you can see the maintenance schedule, valve clearance, service interval, and I stands for inspect, clean, adjust, lubricate, or replace as necessary. So that's inspection time there. You can see that the service interval is every 12,000 kilometers or every 8,000 miles. So this is how the pattern looks like.